I'm not a PhD. <laughs> now we are going to talk to you about um, how to implement or verify more states and in that way have less problems, contrary to what uh, you might think that will happen. So this is um, an experience report in a way about a uh, situation that arose uh, in the last year in the company and how we faced it and what we think might be useful to others facing similar situations. Okay? So this is more than just about the, the state pattern. It's not that we, I mean, you may start by thinking about the state pattern. We have a situation that, that was uh, quite more complicated than, than just in state to an object, that, that, that part was obvious for us, but um, the more important part was that there were multiple states that an option would have because different uh, systems might be interested in the state of the object and in asking for the state they might refer to different uh, things, okay? But all of our states and we wanted to um, like organize that in a useful way, a usual way. Um, but also, in most cases, when you talk about states, it's just an implementation detail. It's the fact that you say, okay, we are going to need to map, to, to, to get, take into account the state of this or that object. Um, here we have a um, situation that was explained to the users. Okay, the users talk about the state of, of, of the object, the, in their common language that they will use of the system. They want to see and understand what the different states were. Um, also, we were aiming for reusability because we were trying to make a base name for our different products, and the idea was that the same strategy uh, on the state could be free. So, just to give you a simple idea, um, or the, on the kind of situation we are talking about, suppose we have an issue tracking system um, and the issue besides the description and the version it was found in has different states and you have the resolution status where it's done or still pending and the payment is maybe it's important if the issue um, implies uh, receiving the payment uh, from the customer uh, and its shipping status if it's uh, already delivered or not. So the, the first thing you say is, okay, the issue is description and the version of the phone is one thing, the state of the issue is another, but we have different states that uh, are relevant. So what's our context? It's not only that we have users that know that the objects have uh, different status, but in different installations for, for different customers, the status, the, the states that, that are relevant are different. So we have one company, for example, in Ahmed, where we have a person in charge of approval, another in charge of the checking of, um, we have, um, sorry, um, trading operations, okay, so maybe buying bonds or stocks. And um, someone is in charge of approval in the company, those purchases or sales, another checks them so that sees that there is some or some regulation, and then the settlement, that's the part where they uh, say, okay, I sent the money or I received the, the, the funds or, or the, the stock or whatever. But then you have a smaller company or less regulated where you only have the approval and settlement and you don't have checking in between, so maybe. That's, that there's that something in our system that's relevant to some users and not to others. Okay. Um, so not only that, but sometimes there are requirements. For instance, uh, the one in charge of authorizing the trades has no requirement. I mean, once the, the transaction is confirmed, it just okay, the authorization status is pending, then it's confirmed. That's done. Um, but in one of our customers, there's a, the checking guy who requires it to be confirmed. So 
was of human nature in the, the offering trades. Um, in another company, maybe that's a requirement. The, um, the trade must first be checked, but if it's in another company, that's not needed. So the, the states that are going to be visible are different, right? Okay? Uh, different companies see different states and have these different transitions on required. Different companies have different states and requirements between the transition for the states. The first company only has authorization and settlement and does not have uh, check-in requirements. The second, yes. Okay, so the last step where uh, the settlement is relevant that uh, the transition has requirements because it must be checked Okay, this is what we have, uh, the system evolved into something like this, and we were tracking the authorization state outside of the trade, this is the trade, the object that <coughs> represents the transaction, we were tracking the authorization state uh, outside that, uh, the settlement state was tracked somewhere else in the settlement system over the far left and the checking state was being tracked somewhere else. We have multiple states all in different places, all separated and it, it was becoming um, complex to manage that and sometimes it, it happened that we were violating these transitions or restrictions <coughs> were uh, having the possibility that uh, an operation was in an inconsistent state. Uh, we saw a problem here and attempted to fix that. Uh, this is an example of what the user intended when you were trying to show the user the current states that uh, it, it was in. Uh, this was the code um, to fetch the state. One of the things I uh, would like to re remark is that we we're making three uh, system queries. There's a trade system, there's a, a checking a check system, and a settlement system somewhere, I don't remember. Oh, the settlement sat on here. Uh, those queries are particularly slow, and we're making the problem more complex yet. <coughs> uh, as we saw that we that has become a problem. We uh, can, we try to think about how to improve that, how to rep how to solve that. Our first idea was to okay was to uh, represent all the states in a sequence, uh, making a chain of status. We just register an operation, then we transition it to authorize, then to check, and then to settle. Uh, it seems simple. It was uh, what it was what we, we could see at the first time. Uh, this had two main problems. First, if we w want to remove the checking state, uh, we have to uh, modify all the graph, all the state, all the state diagram uh, that may become complex. And the other one is that the states itself have information and if we need to access the previous information we have to carry the information for the previous state each time we transition to another. That was not something we wanted. <coughs> and another idea was, okay, if we want to try to separate all this information we could uh, track that in separate states uh, we separated that in, okay, we have an authorization state, we have a checking state, and we have a settlement state. 
Then uh, we define some undefined status for when you have no use for that system or for that uh, for that state in particular. Uh, the problem with this is that we were losing the restrictions. We, if you before you required for in the previous slide. To transition, to transition from an authorization to check to check on to, or from to check to settlement, there was a restriction. Uh, in here, it is lost. <coughs> uh, uh, this, the, there was a pro is that we could separate in these three states, one of the pros is that we could remove the checking state and it's no problem. Our third idea was to handle all the states. Uh, our third idea was to handle all the states as a, as a, as a whole state and the, recognize the restrictions between one and another. Um, here we can we remove the unneeded um, the undefined states and we uh, as the states are so related we can uh, refine transitions and restriction before transition I can say that to transition from one state to another I require some state some see, some uh, some another diagram or some other graph or some state to be a particular state. Uh, this uh, eliminates the problem with the restrictions. This eliminates the problem with the restrictions, and uh, this also doesn't have the initial problem where we were covering all the previous state information. We have the three states as a separate and not a shine whole state object. Uh, I don't like this name, Tabby does not like this name either, but uh, when we were to relate an uh, the state of when we want to relate the states of, of, of an object with that object, we represented that as the status relation. That we couldn't find a better name for that, but that is what we were handle. We were handle. We were working with systems. I'm a bit nervous. Uh, no sé qué decir. We showed three diagrams before. Uh, a checking diagram, an authorization diagram, and a settlement diagram. We showed that we had state transitions. Uh, it seemed like a good idea to refine, to implement this, this diagram, these possible transitions in the systems, because, we, uh, because with that we could check that the transitions were correct. If I can ask, uh, okay, I want to move this object from this state to this state. I want to move this thing from pending to authorized or from authorized to check or from unchecked to check. If the transition is possible, if the arrow exists, I can do it. Uh, these were the objects that we used from to refine that. We have a transition graph with contained with we initialize and create with transitions. <coughs> and a set of requirements, if any, uh, which would be required. We had a system, an object in charge of managing all these graphs, this, the, trade status, the status systems, which contains the relations and the, which contains these graphs, with these state graphs, and the who is in charge of the status relations. What happens next is that all the other all other systems, the trade system, the authorization system, and the checking system, uh, now when we want to when you want to know the state of someone, 
when you want to have or know or the state the, when you want to get the state of something you query the, you ask the status system and if you want to change the state of something you then ask the, you ask the, the status system if you cannot change because it's an invalid transition the status system is the one that responds that uh, you cannot it raises an exception this is how we will do that as a this is how we will do what I was saying. Uh, if you want to get a particular state of something, you say status system, give me the authorization state for an object, for a train, uh, for this train. If you want to get all the states, you ask them without any particular graph. And if you want to perform a transition, you say, okay, uh, system change the authorization state for this object to checked. Uh, with the status. If you cannot do that transition, it raises an exception. And I said before, we refine the, these graphs. This is how we, we initialize these graphs. And in the system, you create the transition graph uh, indicating all the possible states. You um, indicate the connections, the transitions. You can go to from pending to pending if you need to. Uh, you can transition to to pending to confirm and to confirm from uh, to confirm from pending. This graph has no restrictions uh, and its initial state is to be pending. If you ask for a state of a uh, trade that you that has not uh, been asked for a state before, it's supposed to be pending. Uh, when working with transitions, with restrictions, you have to add a transition requirement that says, okay, I will require the authorization state to be confirmed. And when you attempt to that transition, this uh, requirement collaborates with the system and evaluates the, if it's valid or not to do that transition. I want to highlight that the transition is the from and to arguments are classes and the initial state is an object not a, not a simple class why? because the diagram represents all the possible checked states or set states regardless or whether they are instant or whether the, regardless of the instant variable I'm describing the whole state, not a particular state for an object with a graph. So. And it's also simple to query multiple states 
just need to know which state you want to ask the different uh, checking system always wants to know the checking state and does not care if there's a precondition that you should ask or if you should be able to change or not in another state just says change to that to check and check to check and that's why it's done uh, it's also been reusable so we've been able to use this that was um, made originally for a trading system for another different kind <laughs> of trades in another product and it was quite straightforward as new graphs and it's working so we're very happy that we've been able to, to find that solution and also the state tracking is explicit it's one system that's checking everything and, and, and keeping track of what's been happening so obviously we are not there. Um, as always, we have to then put that graph in a relational database because the two products use, this, use a relational database. That's always an issue, so we're trying to improve that. Um, try to optimize it. We're using Glorp to map for, uh, the states to the relational database, and we have been working with that. And we also want to see if we can take this architecture, this idea of the system of the states to other products, other products that also manage different states and have like a similar um, customer needs and see if this also states to, to those other products. So these are the, the guys who are really behind the idea. Uh, Pancho is there. And now we'll put in the implementation. It's very easy traveling through Europe, so we can monkey it up to tell you about what he's been doing, what uh, Pancho designed. Uh, so we can take questions. Thank you. because we uh, we found the things that were not possible with, uh, with all the three ideas before uh, the it's not documented really it's not documented but the resti the loss of restrictions in the second idea and the necessity to carry all the previous information from the previous states uh, were the main uh, drawbacks for the first ideas but so, doesn't matter. So, the, the, point, the point is, you now have a very good understanding why an idea didn't work. So, but, and you can tell that now, right now. But in the future, you want to be able to, like, to recall, to remember why this really idea. So, I think it's, it's a, 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 like a, a best practice, maybe sometimes to take some notes and say, don't go, don't go there because of this. Yeah. Okay, okay uh, there's something that I'm not sure in each part of this, but since we are using VA with MB, everything that we try at least to, to, to release or to try to, to use it in CD, I don't know, to, to check if it's working, the issues are there. So uh, whenever someone wants to understand 
how we reach the vision. We can always check the history and see the evolution of that thought in, in, in case if it is being implemented. Sometimes the, what happens is if you get to a point where you think something's gonna work and you use that now maybe get it to the customer and then change your idea. What we try to do is at least to comment on, 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 on part of that code why something has been kept in a certain way and not in another. So there is some kind of documentation from the learned mistakes uh, but it's inside the code, it's part of uh, the environment. But the idea to keep external documentation uh, about the, the previous ideas, that is uh, your idea to keep external documentation about the previous ideas and why they were left behind, uh, it looks like a good idea. Uh, we are not doing that except for the code as uh, Maxi said, but it looks like a good idea for the future. Um, yes, uh, always do. <laughs> the, the second question is, uh, can you change some fundamental objects, even those are not the main objects, that are very important in the transactions. Uh, I, I, I assume that you have to migrate all the data into the new framework. So uh, my question is, is that this migration uh, to uh, this is my reason to take a lot of platforms uh, for SQL. <laughs> Considering we were we are working with relational database, the migration was uh, about data. The model was easy to migrate, but the data was kind of a pain to migrate. Uh, but it, it was done via uh, my uh, SQL commands. The migration, the model was easy to migrate. It's, it's just object. Okay, great. So we have now the yeah. process. There are three shows in the process.